the use of scientists with credentials is absolutely critical to this strategy because if a tobacco industry executive said, well, you know, I'm not convinced that smoking is really harmful, that wouldn't pass the laugh test. But if a distinguished scientist says it, then it seems like there's a scientific debate. And so a journalist who might not feel compelled to quote a tobacco industry executive will feel compelled to quote a distinguished scientist. So a key part of the tobacco strategy, and we can trace this back to the 1950s, this, is, this has been going on for more than half a century, um, was to recruit scientists. One of the earliest scientists to work for the tobacco industry was a man named C.C. C. Little, who was a famous geneticist but also a eugenicist who thought that all cancers were hereditary and therefore that they weren't caused by smoking. So this is an interesting example of a kind of um, strange bedfellows. Little was sincere. He wasn't just a liar for hire. He wasn't a shill. He truly believed that all cancers were genetic. And so when the tobacco industry says, well, why don't you come work for us? Because we think that cancer is genetic too, and we're really interested in your work. Oh, and we will pay you quite a bit of money. Um, you know, he's not compromising his principles because he agrees with them. And so that was very, very powerful. And that set the stage for what the tobacco industry did then for the next 60 years, which was to find sympathetic scientists. Scientists who were sympathetic either because they were genetic determinists or because they were ideologues who agreed with the tobacco industry arguments that the government should not be interfering. And so a very powerful argument that the tobacco industry used in the 1960s and 70s was the argument that this is personal choice, that grown-ups can decide for themselves whether or not to smoke and the government should not be telling us what to do. And that was part of the reason that Fred Seitz, one of the original merchants of doubt, went to work for the tobacco industry because he agreed with that argument. And um, in the film version of our book, uh, our filmmaker Robbie Kenner found this wonderful footage in which uh, Fred Seitz looks the reporter in the eye and says, it's the smoker's responsibility. And then the reporter says, well, what about after all the scientific evidence came out and we really knew that smoking was harmful? And Seitz just sits there and he calmly says, it's the smoker's responsibility. So he has this notion of personal responsibility that enables him to think that the tobacco industry is doing nothing wrong, even though we know now, and they knew then, that they're selling a harmful product that's killing people.